everyone, everyone wants to join, everyone wants to be a part of the empire because they see the superiority of our, our cultural and economical values. So we're doing well, we've integrated Silesia, we've conquered Saxony and Thuringia and, and uh, Hesse, I think. We actually had a lot of interesting questions on the forums um, regarding the balance of the game and whether or not uh, we're going to see France nerfed and other nations boosted. Um, well, the game is not really designed to be balanced to begin with. Historically, nations were overpowered to begin with. And it's pretty much how you play is you become stronger or weaker as you go along, especially if you're a, uh, a nation uh, played by a human player then, you know, it, it's going to be more and more difficult. It's going to be easier to become a great power in the world because, you know, you can you can exploit the AI for all for what it's worth. And in the end, a human player will always be more intelligent than uh, than the AI. Don't 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 come in here, Wiz, because, you know, he will come in here and try to correct me on that one. So let's see. Aragon, what is Aragon doing? Aragon has, has he gone for Crete? No, he's not. He still has Naples. And I'm really curious what he's going to be doing here. He's trying to get a couple of cores. Aragon's gone to Tunisia. I'm sorry, what is this, Carthage? Seriously, Aragon, you are not Car you are not Carthaginian. You are from, even though he's from Barcelona, sure, one could argue that the blood of Hannibal may or may not flow through his veins, but why are you going after Carthage? Classic Carthage, to say the least, well, except for the whole fact that Roma is there. Punic War number, I think, four it was? The third one was not that impressive, apparently, from what I hear. But, uh, yeah, Aragon is trying to go for an all-on simulation of the Punic Wars. Delightful. Aragon, in the meantime, uh, can go for tech, uh, marketplace, and dock. He looks like he's going to go for those national ideas. He's, I, he needs to go for exploration. Come on. You're Castile for crying out loud. Not having Castile going for any colonization is dreadful. It should happen regardless of what's going on. Portugal, in the meantime, has he actually gone through all of his explorers yet? He has. Um, pro tip. When you're exploring, always send them back to the Azores. Like, quick hop. Explore. Oh, that's nice. And back to heal. Up and to go back. It's actually another nice feature, actually. If you have a fleet of ships, what you can do is you can actually use the uh, the patrol thing and uh, set one of the patrol nodes inside of a harbor. So it will go down, da 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 go down its patrolling, and then dock at the harbor, heal up, and then leave it again. So basically, you can actually hook up a, uh, a docking area. You can actually uh, you can macro in a docking procedure like space with a with an island or a harbor so that your uh, ships that are going out there and uh, patrolling the seas can actually heal up as you go little things little things what it's uh, what is it about let's take a look here at the chat oh that is actually a good point aragon may be looking to become king of gondar <laughs> Uh, in the category of absolutely ridiculous things, holdovers from EU3. <laughs> or it may have even been in, in EU2. I'm not entirely sure because I actually never played Hearts uh, EU2. Uh, I know, right? I should be hung, drawn, and quartered before saying things like that. Flanders, in the meantime, you know, being Belgian and stuff, cutting diamonds. You know, like a little factory down here. Coast of Holland. Oh, actually, I never seen it. It's a little factory thingy. What? Uh, why do they? Oh, they got a they, they got a textile mining factory there. That's kind of cool. Mm, never seen them before. But uh, the world as it is is still forming. It looks like a Brandenburgian conquest of Fort Pomeran. Interesting. Fort Pomeran. So it looks like that Brandenburg is looking to integrate Pomeria somewhere in the near future. I mean, he, he's got a little... He, he can't really afford to do so, so he may go for the full-on annexation. But I believe if you have all of this territory, you can vassalize Pomeria, or at least all three of them, and then Diplo annex them later on. Which, in my personal opinion, is probably the best way of doing things. 
Especially if you're playing as Brandenburg, because Brandenburg is such a powerhouse later on in the game. Pet Frog, in the meantime, is still over to Palatinate. Palatinate? Palatinate? Oh, well. The Pal... pal it's, it's always been one of those strange things. I've actually... I've been there. I've been to... I've been to places like... Uh, if, if Metz is part of it these days... Uh, I'm not entirely sure if Metz is actually part of that particular province or that's that's Bundesland, but he does have a massive. Oh, that's gonna cause some problems. Yeah, and he's got some Lollards heretics are running around as well, so that's always good. He's going to need to sack some of his advisors because he's running pretty low on money. Yeah, if uh, Bavaria is smart, he'll get rid of some of his advisors because uh, he's gonna run into some serious serious troubles. So let's take a look here at what's going on on the Indian subcontinent. Uh, Varenjar. So he's been uh, been a busy bee. Going to war with uh, Jangladesh as well as Delhi. It looks like Termorids are only one province away of taking uh, of taking uh, Delhi, which will mean that uh, he will be able to turn himself into the Mughals. And uh, you know what? He's almost, in place. he's almost ready to go for that. He's just a little bit more. He needs a core in upper dough up and central dough up. So he is uh, he's already got one of them. He's got central. He just needs upper right now. And he needs to core this. He's, he's in the process of coring it right now. There we go. And then he just needs this one. And then the party is pretty much over. Uh, and then we will see the, uh, the the mighty Mughals rise. And probably integrating Persia quite quickly after that as well. Let's take a look actually at how uh, he's doing. Uh, Yeah, he actually, yeah, he's Persia, uh, Baluchistan, and Sindh as uh, as vassals. It's almost over, and he needs one more. And of course, we also have Morocco, which is one of our player uh, player nations. Hasn't done all that much. Has uh, gone for a uh, quick war here. Has he gone actually gone for any wars so far? I haven't seen it. He's got a couple of loans that came out, so he. Probably did go for a couple of wars, but it looks like uh, he managed to take back. Yeah, he managed to take a big chunk of uh, of Algeria right here, of Algiers. Last game, we actually saw Morocco completely controlling most of South America and wrapping all the way around Africa, pretty much controlling everything there. There's a. Uh do we actually have Japan? That's probably a good question. Japan is in the game. Oh my god, I completely missed that. So, uh, Japan is in the game, everybody. <laughs> Welcome, Japan. Um, Japan is pretty much playing single player until uh, like 15, 60, 60, 16, 20 maybe. But it looks like he's trying to uh, reform the Daimo. But uh, yeah, Japan is in the game. This is uh, exciting stuff. And Rufo is actually playing. He was actually playing as... Um, I believe Terminates, and I believe his goal will be to take a chunk of Korea and wait for the Portuguese to arrive so he can westernize quite quickly and then start taking over Ming and Manchu and all that jazz. Maybe colonize up this a little bit, but we shall see whether or not that is going to be the case. But yeah, Japan is here as well. Uh, no, Ryoku. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys, in the chat. I'm going to have to disappoint you, but Ryoku is sadly not a username. Yeah. Uh, Johan, what are you up to? Still at war here. With, uh... Is that actually... It, it is Novgorod. I was about to say. But the thing is, Brandenburg won't be able to form Prussia until Ostpoisen is actually being picked up here by... by them. There's just not much they can do without that. They, they just have to be Brandenburg, really. Or maybe try to go for a Germany game later on, but that's going to be difficult because there's quite a lot of territory attached to that. For those people that have joined us, welcome. We have about 45 minutes of gameplay remaining here today as uh, we are playing the beta of Europa Universalis 4. We just launched uh, Conquest of Paradise a 
couple, like two weeks ago now, I think. And we're getting ready to uh, to show you development of wealth of nations during these particular sessions. So uh, we're playing beta, full on beta here, and uh, we will show you how things will be coming along in this game. But yeah, just cranked up the music a little bit for you guys to enjoy because it was a little bit low. I can hear it on my I can hear it on my desk. So if you guys think the uh, the music is a little bit too loud for you guys to enjoy, then I please do give me a shout because I did crank it up a little bit just so I can uh, hear that stuff as well. Yeah, that's better. All right, so where are we at? All right, Burgundy. Well, Burgundy is uh, between a bit of a rock and a hard place. As uh, he is trying to take Bois, uh, has what does he actually have when it comes to when it comes to having vassals? So East Frisia, Lorraine, and Gelra are his vassals. Hmm. Pretty standard stuff there. Pretty standard stuff. And he'll try to Diplo and Exos later. I haven't seen any diplomatic annexation in the game so far. I believe that France may be looking at uh, an ex Fazel. Yeah, there we go. We actually got two annex. Uh, we got a single annexation thing going on here in, in Orle uh, Orleans. And uh, ooh, national the Liquor Act. The French and the Liquor Act. You have got to be joking. Meanwhile, England. Uh, well. Enjoying that Jorvikian province. <laughs> it's like the Great Heathen Army 2.0. Except, you know, Normans instead of Saxons there. <laughs> Catholics still stand strong. Nothing to uh, report. Let's take, a look. Let's take a look at the trade game here, shall we? The Western European trade node. Not being controlled by anybody because nobody's got any ships there. Mainly because there's also no trade to send out. I just noticed something. This is interesting. So it would appear that all the trade into the Western European trade node is coming. Oh wait, no, those trade nodes haven't been those trade nodes haven't been activated yet, so you won't actually be able to see where the trade is coming from. So there is actually two trade points coming into Western Europe that we don't know about yet. Ooh, exciting stuff. But for those people who are wondering, uh, we will be uploading these in episodic content style onto the YouTubes on a daily basis for you guys to enjoy. So basically what happens there is um, I cut, cut up video in 15 minute segments, put some put some, uh, some, some bar stuff in front of that where people talk about how terrible they were and how much they raffle stomp Burgundy and then pretty much a trailer and then uh, then the next day you will get the same thing again over the period of about seven days. We're going to be stopping this session at, at 17.30 local time here in, uh, in Stockholm for those people that are tuning in from North America. That is 5.30. My God. Exciting stuff. All right, so Brittany, what do you got? It almost looks like people can go for ideas. Like Brittany's gone for uh, for Breton ideas. What's well, obviously Brittany's gone for Breton ideas. He's gone for defensive ideas. It's that military drill. That military drill, I swear to God, is one of the most overpowered things I've ever had the displeasure of using in any game. It used to be even worse. I think it was the morale of armies plus 33% it used to be. It got nerved into the ground pretty hard, but still plus 25 are you kidding? That's just insane. And uh, some of the other ideas I kind of already use, like aristo uh, aristocratic and uh, espionage, I think needs a little bit of love as well, really. Uh, I think it's more useful than people give it credit for, because it does have a couple of really cool uh, bit of things to do, like um, rebel support, efficiency, espionage, so you can actually see what's going on there. Uh, have like basically you're playing as hungry as as Poland and Hungary is trying to invade you. And you're like, hey, what's up, Hungary? How are you liking them rebels all over the place, pretty much? So that is a feature. 
So, Tunisia is, well, Algier, Algiers has been removed from the map. So they're gone. Do we have any strange abnormalities in the world right now? That is the real question. Well, Bavaria is being covered. <laughs> is working hard to keep the peace within the empire. The spice must flow. Yes, precisely. <laughs>